Hello. In this video, I'd like to share with you how I came to the Lord, my conversion story. My background was a Christian background. I was raised a Roman Catholic Christian. I went to church on a weekly basis. However, at the age of 20, I made my own choice to leave the Church of Rome, and I became a born-again evangelical Christian. I believed Jesus was God, of course, and I gave him my life and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I believed in all the Christian doctrines, the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus, the original sin, and I believe that the Bible was 100% the Word of God. I was also committed to my faith. I used to go to church on a regular basis, a non-denominational church. I used to be friends with a pastor and fellowship with other evangelical born-again Christians. I used to watch TV shows where the gospel was preached. I used to also preach the gospel to my friends. And there came a point in my early 20s when I wanted to preach the gospel to Muslims. I come from a small town in North America where there are no Muslims. Uh, in fact, there are only white people and Christians. So what I wanted to do was see the gospel spread to Islamic nations. And basically I wanted to make a starting point on the internet, preaching the gospel to Muslims. So what I did basically to find out a little bit more about Islam was get some video debates between Christian and Muslim speakers. And I got a bunch of debates um, by a Muslim speaker called Ahmed Didat. Uh, he's a Muslim. He was a Muslim from South Africa. And he was quite learned in the Bible. In the debates, I started to realize that Ahmed Didat, the Muslim speaker, was always winning and refuting the Christian on every single point. Um, regarding the Bible, Didat was showing the Christians that it was not the word of God. He was showing us that original sin is not a teaching that comes from the Bible, and it does not come from God. He was showing us on all the major issues the Christian doctrines were false and not based on the Bible or misinterpreted or they were simply fabrications corrupted or added to the Bible by later scribes. So I came to see that the Trinity doctrine, the divinity of Jesus doctrine, the death and resurrection uh, doctrine of Christianity, it was all on thin ice. It was very flimsy and weak indeed. And I was frustrated and angry. And I didn't, I didn't like Ahmadidat in the beginning, I must say. I was frustrated at the Christian speakers because they had PhD in Christian theology, but they could not refute Mr. Ahmadidat, who was self-taught in the Bible. And he, of course, being a Muslim, was using the Bible to refute my own Christian doctrines. And he used to use the Quran, of course, for, you know, just to back up what he was saying. But I remembered a verse in the Bible in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, which says, Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for a reason for your hope. So I thought to myself, I better go away and study to find out what Didat is saying in my, in my attempt to basically refute him. I'm, uh, I'm a person who has a skeptical mind. I only believe in things that I study and understand through investigation. So basically what I did was I started studying the Christian doctrines from an Islamic perspective. I never looked at the Bible before outside the Christian perspective. Dida was confronting me with the decision here of looking at the Bible from the Muslim point of view. So I started looking at the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, the original sin doctrines, and the belief of the Bible being the Word of God. I started seeing that Didat was absolutely correct, and I, as a Christian, was on the wrong path. I was on the wrong path to salvation. Christianity was not the true religion of God. This was a great blow to me, because I had been a Christian for many, many years. I had been a born-again Christian for six years almost, and in general, a Roman Catholic Christian for 20 years. So all of my beliefs that I had been born and raised with, were turning upside down, and this was a great shock to me. I didn't want to become a Muslim at this point, but I needed to get to the bottom of these matters and find out what the truth was. <clears throat> so, I also started studying Islam to find out more about it, because I didn't know much about it. So basically, I found out that Muslims believed in a God, in one God. They had something called Tawheed, which is pure monotheism. They called God Allah. Um, they believed that Jesus was a prophet and the Messiah sent to the Jewish people, which was a great relief to me. 
Um, they believe that salvation comes from God's grace and mercy. And you get salvation as a Muslim by having faith in that one true God and doing deeds as a result of that faith. Uh, they also believed in a prophet who came after Jesus called Muhammad, and they believed there's in their scripture as the word of God, and their scripture is called the Quran. So, this was all new to me. I knew some things about Islam, but not, not, not in detail. But when I found out, as I said, that Muslims believe in Jesus, that was a great comfort to me, because that was, as, as you like, a stepping stone or a link between uh, Christianity and Islam. And as I read the Quran more, I started to see that Muslims believe in the same biblical prophets that I had been born and raised to believe. So what I did was I started, uh, I w we moved to the city, we moved out of the small town where I originally came from, and in the city where we moved there was a mosque, I went to, I went to the mosque, knocked on the door, and asked could I speak to somebody about Islam. So there I started to uh, go to the mosque on a weekly basis, asking questions to the imam, the Muslim leader there. He gave me more literature to read uh, and the biography of the Prophet Muhammad. He answered all my questions and he said to me, um, I do not want you to become a Muslim unless you're sure about the faith. And this was a great shock to me as well because as a born-again Christian, I was used to the preaching of the Christians, and the Christians always try to influence the person to become a Christian. They never say to you, I don't want you to become a Christian until you, you know, go away, study and pray about it, and then come back to me. So this was a, a great shock to me as well. This man was telling me that Islam is the true path of, of salvation, yet he was telling me, don't become a Muslim until you're sure. So that was new to me. Nobody was forcing me to become a Muslim. So, basically, I saw in Islam all the truth that I recognize in my soul that appeal to me as being the, the, the correct way of life that God would want me to live. I, through Islam, through the Quran, through Muslim belief, was able to understand Christianity in its right context. I was able to understand the Bible through reading the Quran. And I said to myself at one point, I must become a Muslim. I believe that there is only one God. I believe Jesus is a prophet. In fact, in the Bible, Jesus never claimed to be God, and he never said, I am God, or worship me. In the Quran, God was promising me, me salvation. In the Bible, God never uses the word promise for salvation. Uh, in Islam, salvation is made easy to you, which reflected God's mercy to us, because if God really loves you, he'll make salvation, the path of salvation, very easy for you. In Christianity, the path of salvation is quite difficult. You have to believe in the unjust killing of an innocent man who shed his blood for your sins, which is, of course, not a reflection of God's justice. And, of course, you have to believe as a Christian in the original sin doctrine that God puts you into this world with sin on your heart or on your soul already before you even had a chance to know right from wrong. Because as a baby, you cannot be a sinner. And Islam taught original forgiveness rather than original sin. Adam and Eve, they sinned, but they asked God to uh, forgive them, and they received that forgiveness. So, salvation to me was much more appealing in the Islamic doctrine rather than the Christian doctrine. It seemed much more easier. Salvation is simply a gift from God in the Islamic teachings. It comes from God's mercy and grace, and you, you, obtain, that. you obtain that by faith in Him and living a righteous life of faith and good deeds resulting from that faith. So to me, Islam seemed to be more superior and theologically um, correct and appealing to my soul than all the major issues. And to me, that was amazing. As I have already said, I thought Islam was a religion of terror and murder and an and alien Arab religion. And I saw in the Quran a message of peace and hope and tranquility, salvation and kindness and goodness. And I recognized from the Bible Still, there's some truth there, and, it, and the Bible does, in fact, say that Satan cannot be divided against himself. Uh, if he does, his, his uh, house will fall, or something of that effect. So basically, I said to myself, these good teachings from the Quran cannot come from Satan. So basically, I made a decision to accept Islam, and I gave Allah my life, and accepted Him as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that that day was the day I chose the true religion, and that day I became a true follower of Jesus as a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you.